Hello guys, hello, hello, hello. So I know I haven't gone live today, so I figured what the heck, I gotta make some food. So might as well go live about my food, all right? Might as well go live about some food. I've already washed my hands, you animals. They're clean, they're clean. So we are doing beef stew today. And as you guys know, I'm probably not gonna give you guys the actual recipe. Uh, for the beef stew because I never do right. I never do I never give you guys like everything I'll, I'll, I'll end up having to write stuff down because to be honest with you I cook so much that I literally eyeball everything that goes into the pot I, I don't like say like an eighth, eighth teaspoon <laughs> Right, I've been doing this stuff long enough that I just gotta go to boop 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 right Just let's pop it all in there. So we're just gonna be making some beef stew as you guys can see I cut my meat Okay, I don't buy beef stew. I don't buy the beef stew meat. Um, I actually get cheap cuts of meat because you're cooking the crap out of it. <laughs> you don't need a good cut of meat for beef stew because you're cooking the crap out of it, okay? It's gonna tenderize just by the nature of cooking it completely down. So I used, um, and this is a cheap, cheap meat, um, boneless shoulder steak. So again, a real cheap cut of meat. And then I do something a little more tender. Um, and this is, the eye round steak and so I just get I just get uh, this one comes like in a you know almost like a flat steak and this one comes into like little three tenderloin type steaks but I cut these down and then when I cut them down you got your you got your uh, beef stew meat I mean you can get the beef stew meat yourself but it's it's more expensive to already have it cut up so I like getting my own meat I like cleaning it I like cutting it up myself it's easier to clean it's easier everything so I just figured I would show you what I'm doing because this is the meal today. And I have to tell you, what makes my, I, I will be honest with you, this is, this is a Bullhorn Betty secret and I really don't tell too many people because somebody told me and I've been doing it since, right? So here's the secret to my beef stew, okay? It's something you guys, oh, let me turn this way. It's something that you guys probably will not think about for beef stew. Ready? Sweet potato. So I put carrots in there. So we got carrots, right? These are already cleaned, washed, and rinsed, and, and sweet potato. That's what goes in. This is my secret to the best beef stew ever. So if you really want to know, we're going to peel this and chop it up into bite-sized pieces and it goes into the beef stew. I know that I hear that there are some chefs out there in our audience. So I'm wondering if the chefs also use sweet potato. They probably do. They probably do. But I love sweet potato in my beef stew. It just, it, it really does just make it good. And we're going to have a nice dark thick gravy um i'm cheating on uh, you know like the broth the thickening broth i'm cheating a little bit on the broth because most of the time if i've had steak like within the last month the last 30 days i will take the bones from my steak and cook it down and make a fresh um fresh beef broth i didn't have any more beef broth because we did the braised pork or, or the braised uh, short ribs and so because we did the bra braised short ribs, which took all of my fresh beef stock, I had no more beef stock. So I went and got this, Swanson's. And it's, I, I don't get the stuff with no sodium in it. I'm sorry, but there's a, a crap load of freaking sodium in just about everything you cook. Uh, unless you want bland food, um, sodium's in mine. I don't have any, you know, I know there, there's probably some people that have high blood pressure, cholesterol and things like that have to go low sodium. You're not getting a low sodium recipe from Bullhorn Betty. I'm sorry. You're not getting um, a gluten free, fat free. I mean, we can say it is. You know, if, if we need to, if we need to lie to ourselves and say that it's fat free, so we don't feel guilty. Hey, you know, I'm that kind of friend. I'm that kind of friend. You know, I'll tell you that it's only a hundred calories for the five bowls you had. I mean, if that's what you need, I, I, I'm that friend. I'm that friend. If you need me to be the friend that tells you you, you you don't have the big button that jeans, I'll do that for you today. <laughs> I need to stop before you guys kill me. And I screwed up. I, I wasn't even paying attention. I screwed up how I cut my onion. That's okay. I was going to quarter it anyways, but 
I like chunky onion in my stuff. I like, when you're doing a beef stew, I like everything chunky. So you're not gonna get a whole lot of uh, small pieces. So like even onions, I like my onions pretty chunky in here. So I hope you guys like hanging out with me. It's nothing big. Just since I'm, I'm gonna be doing this anyways and you guys haven't seen me today, I might as well kill two birds with one stone. Um, so what's going on in all the cases we're doing? Love you, Betty. Hey, Mama Llama. It's nice to see you. You guys get to see me in my when I'm out in the wild. You know, I, I'd hate for people to say say what I'm doing. I mean, because they're all up in my business and stuff without actually knowing what I'm doing. You know, kind of seems stupid. So we just want to bring people into the. Uh, into this just a little bit so if they're going to talk about me they got something to talk about you know that's how we roll over here on the bullhorn buddy show right this is just a little different because to be honest with you i looked at the freaking news feed uh this morning and we got all kinds of sick vile twisted crap going on in this world and quite frankly some of it was related to children in different states and I'm not going to go through them because they were pretty graphic. You guys know about um, the little five-year-old in um, Kansas. Her parents were at the homeless camp. And guys, this is why, it, you know, I don't frown upon families not having money. But families that have children, they need safe places to sleep, whether they've got a, a house or not. And this was a situation where this family was living in a uh, homeless camp and another person of that homeless camp did terrible things to their daughter. And as a result of the terrible things that this animal did to their daughter, their five-year-old child lost, lost her life. Her name was Zoe. And I just find that really sick and twisted. And it's stuff that I can't even, you know, we can bring it up in general speaking about her case, but the details of her case, guys, are so graphic that, you know, we could talk about them. But to be honest with you, I, 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 I'm going to spare, spare you guys. Woo! That's the one that shot me in the eye. Bullhorn Betty. Cutting onions, so I got two down. So we're at we're at a, a you know we're at battle one and one because I got the first one in the pot without crying, but the second one got me. The second one got me. And this will this these will all cook down and and separate. It's gonna look really chunky because if you know anything about my cooking, you get a lot of chunk. And this is gonna be very chunky. But those, those onions are going to cook down. We're going to add a little bit of garlic in there. You know, I, I use, I, I like fresh garlic, but I don't use like fresh, fresh garlic. Uh, what do I use? Where is my darn garlic? I hit it somewhere. Where are you, garlic? Oh, da, 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 da. Put you huh, did I already take it out? this stuff this stuff is pretty good and sometimes it comes in like this is in water and I like the water but I also really 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 um, love the olive oil they have uh, you know I use garlic in just about everything so I always buy in bulk when it comes to this stuff but they even have one of these like in um, in oil and I actually like the one in the olive oil it's pretty good so I just got to throw a couple of spoons into this that's all I do is just, again, I don't really measure at this point. I'll probably have to start a recipe book at some point. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm probably going to have to. So then we got this in here. I've already salted it. I haven't put any pepper in it just yet. Um, I'm just going to let that cook down, and then I'm going to get the um, celery. I'm going to get the stuff cut up in there, and then I'm just going to pour the... the um, juice on it. I'm going to turn it down to low 
and we're done. I mean, it's it's just going to sit here and and cook you know cook down for a few hours, and I won't even I won't even be back in here. I mean, I literally put it on low and just let it go. So. So I just get the hearts, right? Cut the tops, cut the bottoms off. And I always make, again, my vegetables in a, in a beef stew because it's gotta cook. You want your vegetables bigger. You don't want small diced minced vegetable. Otherwise you won't have any vegetables. They will just liquefy um, during its cooking time. So, and I may have to change this into a larger stock pot depending on how much this makes, we'll see. And then we'll go into the office and we'll talk about some true crime. I'll get the computer up and running. It already looks good, I gotta tell you. Look at this. See, it already looks good. So we're gonna have, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a pretty, it's gonna be a pretty hearty stew when I'm done. And I'll tell you what, you always wanna get a good, Actually, I don't need this until later. This is going to cook down quicker. And I've got my potatoes. I'm going to put the potatoes in there later. So that's pretty much it. We'll just let this cook down. If you're wondering why I would put it in the um, cast iron, because I just like the taste, I, I like the flavor of the cast iron. So even though it's going to probably be uh, put into a larger stock pot, I like the flavor the cast iron um, provides this particular um, recipe. So that's why it's going to be switched. Some people are going to go, why didn't you just start it in the other stock pot? Because it, it, it I like my seasoned um cast iron and if people that, that cook with cast iron know exactly what I'm talking about it's just something about it's just literally something about the seasoning you know so it's just um, and that's why we season it you never wash like I was talking to somebody I said I cleaned my um, I cleaned my uh, pan and they're like you're not supposed to wash it you're still supposed to clean it. I mean, you're supposed to clean it with clear water and you, you season it with oil like I showed you and salt to actually get, you know, clean. And then you stick it in the oven, in the hot oven, and it seasons the, um, the cast iron. I've been cooking with cast iron for literally years. I love cast iron for some stuff, not everything. Like some stuff, I like the flavor of the grill. Like, you know, the grill flavor, the flame broiled flavor. So I'll actually, um, you know, cook some meat on the grill just to get that flavor because that's the flavor I need inside of my recipe. But this one is just beef stew. It's just something that's hearty. I got fake biscuits again, but I got frozen fake biscuits. So they're better than the canned stuff uh, for this recipe because I think it'll be good to have the, have a nice, you know, flavorful biscuit. We'll do a biscuit recipe. I'll show you guys my biscuit recipe. I don't know why I just haven't felt like doing it. It's because, to be honest with you, I haven't really felt like cooking, you know? I haven't felt like really cooking in a while. But I do, I do, because, you know, my neighbor, uh, I can tell you he needs to have good food. Um, so at least I know whenever I, I cook a meal, at least I know my neighbor is eating a, a, a fresh, from scratch meal in most cases, but... Uh, when I cook for you guys, I know many of you guys don't want to cook everything from scratch. You guys want something that's simple and easy. So that's kind of what I do. I try to find little things that I can eat. <laughs> because I don't mind, as long as I can eat it, you know, that's why some of, even the, like um, mac and cheese. We're going to have to do, like, I'm very, very particular about my mac and cheese. So my mac and cheese literally has to be Velveeta, right? It's got to be Velveeta. It's got to be, or Cracker Barrel. I love Cracker Barrel, the box Cracker Barrel. Um, but other than that, I want to make it myself. I want to make it from scratch. So, sorry. When I do pepper and onions, I don't know what it does, but it just gets all of my, my, my uh, nasal passage all gunked up. So, I'm going to turn on the computer and get on the computer here just a little bit. 
let's see how many people we got in here. I can't even read. I'm so blind, y'all. I'm, I'm literally getting blind. And you know the crazy part is? I didn't realize how blind I was until I went to the freaking eye doctor. Then they put glasses on me, right? So now I have glasses. Well, you know, I, I could see before I had glasses, but now that I'm being forced to wear these glasses, when I don't have the glasses on, I can't see. <laughs> I could see before the glasses. Now that I, I, my eyes have adjusted to it, it just, it's causing me heartburn. Heartburn, I say. This is my office. You guys never get to see this side of it. There it is. There it is, right there. You guys never get to see what's on this side of the office, right? It's, it, I'm a slob. <laughs> I'm a slob, but I know where everything's at here. <laughs> I use Velveeta when I make homemade mac and cheese. My, my uh, best friend does too. My best friend does too. My best, oh my gosh, my best friend, I, I gotta tell you, she, I'm supposed to be over there seeing her right now, and I forgot I was, I, I had dinner, I was supposed to make dinner tonight, tonight's my turn to cook, so, and I knew I wanted beef stew, so I, um, I was out of beef broth, uh, onions, I had potatoes, but I was, but onions are, you, you gotta have onions in, in beef stew. So, at any rate, I hope everybody's doing well. Let me get my let me get my email open popped open because I did a lot of work early this morning. And what I do when I do my work is I, um, uh, as I'm doing my research <laughs> and reading through the stuff, if something's interesting, then I'll email it to myself so I, I so I know what my my day is going to be. You can just you can see literally my uh, it says me 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 and there's no subject i never write a subject but it's always the articles that i was reading and um there's quite a few different types of cases that are going on like a murder suicide in new jersey um alabama 14 year old kills brother and the family and has a family hit list a 14 year old like yeah i mean guys I'm, I'm telling you there's some 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 crazy stuff going on out there in um in the world uh child neglect leads to the death of a four month old i mean it's just um it's bad every time i turn around Oh, and here's the one that was um, Ard, the little five-year-old. It was just that that story. It's so heartbreaking for me that I, I'm I'm covering it in general terms. I really am because I, I'm telling you, I can't cover a case like that. I, I don't, you know. I try. Uh, I read into them, and I gotta tell you, I'm so enraged by the details of the case that. I mean, I, I just can't. It, it, it's very hard. It's very, very hard when it comes to certain children, um, you know, they're certain ages. Like, you know, our children, they need to be protected. But and it's no different, you know, and, and I don't want people misunderstanding. It doesn't matter, you know, if hor horrible things, you know, happen to great people and happen to small people, like children and things like that. So they're, they're, I'm not trying to say that there's just a special heinousness to a crime that happens to a, a, a toddler. I mean, a five-year-old to me is still a toddler. I know they're big girls. I get that. But, you know, they're still babies at five years old. I'm sorry. They are. And things like this just, it, it enrages me. It really does. And it, it's one of those things where I just, I'm so thankful that law enforcement got to the animal before somebody else did. You know what I'm saying? Because I tell you what, there's a few people, <laughs> there's a few people in Bullhorn Betty's, uh, you know, mind uh, that would definitely uh, be ripe for, uh, you know, a bobbit maneuver and uh, this animal out of Kansas, uh, without a doubt, is definitely, um, is definitely, um, one of those people. 
And I'm also listening. I, I received a few other articles in here, and if we're just going to go through it. I got to go check on the um, beef stew in just a second. It says a New Jersey cop was charged in killing of his baby freed. What is this? Daniel Bannister was released after a judge ruled in his favor over seized cell phone. The prosecutor's office um, has appealed the decision. And this is one that says Mercer County police officers who was charged in the killing of, an inf of his infant daughter in 2018 was released from county jail in January after a judge ruled in his favor over seized cell phones. The Mercer County prosecutor's office confirmed Wednesday Casey uh, de Blasio, a, a spokesperson for the prosecutor's office, confirmed to the patch that Daniel Bannister was released from custody after Judge Darlene um, per, per, Perikstra, what is, I can't, I, like Perikstra, I can't pronounce her name, it's P-E-R-E-K-S-T-R-A, on January 19th, granted his motion and order his release on level three monitoring with restrictions uh, in place regarding supervision and supervised contact with children. I'm sorry, there is a piece of me, I know that these people are innocent until proven guilty in the eyes of the law, but honestly, I'm sorry, if a parent is on, on, on trial for murder of another one of their children or something to that effect, I would presume that, you know, they shouldn't be around children. I'm, I'm sorry. And I know that it's got to be hard. But I just, I think when you're on, and it's a double-edged sword because, you know, what if the person is, is innocent and they were taken, you know, during this time, taken away from their child or on the flip side of that, you know, even if they're guilty, um, do they not have a right to have the love and, and, and hugs and support of their children? So, I mean, there's a lot that, that can be said on that. You know, I, I kind of bounce back and forth um, on that because it's a tough decision, you know, what's right, what's wrong. But I, I just, I'm sorry, but I, I just feel, I mean, you're already in jail. So, you know, you're already suffering whether you're innocent or guilty anyways. I just personally... Um, want to make sure that children are safe because they don't get to make decisions for themselves. And they are, they're the ones that get the brunt of the decisions that their parents make on their behalf. So if you have one, a, a person that's already in jail for hurting a child, to me, just like they do other victims where they say you can't be around them, I personally believe that they should not be around any other children, supervised or unsupervised, because it only takes a split second. And I'm sorry, I just, I think that's a huge gamble with people's, uh, ch or children's lives. I, I truly believe it. Now, again, you know, people probably don't necessarily agree with me 100% of the time, and that's okay, because I don't agree with them 100% of the time. You know, we all have our own, our own stuff going on. What we got going on here? Oh. Oh. Getting hot. Getting hot in here. Getting hot in here. Right here. Look at this lid. That's the one bad thing about this uh, stock pot and the lid. There's like not a real good handle on it. So, I mean, it's got the little things, but they're. Mmm. Mmm, nice rolling boil. Okay, so we got it to a boil. So now I'm gonna just I'm turning it down to low, and that's it. And it's gonna be here for for the foreseeable future. Let this cook down. Get some seasoning in it. Whenever you're cooking soup, I hate to be the bearer of bad news for especially people that are salt conscious. I have not found a soup yet that doesn't require a crap load of salt in it, okay? I'm sorry. I know that they make uh, an alternative salt called K-salt. It's uh, like a potassium-based salt. It's better for you for those that can't have a lot of salt. And, and, and believe it or not, I've tried it. I've tasted it myself. And I have to be honest with you, pleasantly surprised, it does taste and season exactly like salt. 
but it's called K salt. It has a K in front of the salt. Oops, there we go. And um, so this is going to cook down for, I don't know, probably about an hour or so. So we're not, we don't need to come in. And I'm going to decide um, when I go to thicken it up if I'm going to add, uh, put, uh, put it into a different stock pot, maybe a larger one, and add another uh, bit of, of broth. It really does depend on your ratio of broth to, you know, meat and potatoes and stuff. I haven't even put the potatoes in. For this one, I usually use russet potatoes, but I did, I did get some... Um, some uh, red skin potatoes and I thought I'd try those in this uh, but I know that these are, don't these don't take as much time to cook down as a russet potato so I can't add that in otherwise it'll just be mush and I don't want mush in my um, in my beef stew I like all I like firm vegetables <laughs> I like firm vegetables guys okay I like firmness it's important. <laughs> Firm vegetables for my sauce. <laughs> if you walked into this conversation, you you probably wouldn't even even think we're talking about food. <laughs> we're awful. We're awful, guys. So I'll I'll keep you guys posted on the um on the beef stew. I really will. But I just thought this was fun. I'm trying to do some things where we can kind of incorporate a couple different things in uh, to the show because to be honest with you. This, this, some of this stuff is, it's so hard. Like even Layla Santanello, you know, I am, I'm really wrapped up in that case. You know, I, um, like she just really uh, stole my heart because I just feel so bad for her. You know, I just want to know what happened to her. And, uh, you know, and, and, and because her mom is just, her mom's such a kind soul, you know, and it's just hard to see a parent struggling and just wanting to find the answers and you really can't do anything but be there and look you know there's there's no answers i've got for this lady you know i've got to find them you know the, the stuff that i do hand over it's you know we have to go out and, and, and really do work to get it because we don't know these people we don't know you know uh, in in many cases I, I don't even know if i'm on the the right you know right trail because i have to be honest with you being on that that green um um what is it called the the green belt the green belt uh trail when i was on that green belt trail i every time we passed somebody you know we had the flyers in our hands we're like have you seen this young lady you know we prayed with people on the trail um just a lot of stuff but we we kept asking you know many people because you know she was walking on that trail barefoot basically she had no shoes she had socks on but no shoes and she is a pretty girl. So we decided to ask, nobody saw her on the trail. Nobody at all saw her on the trail. So we kept walking. We ended up going through this entire forest. I mean, like forest, like we were crawling over and under things and stuff like that. Um, but we found this community, this little area um, not too far from the last place that she was reportedly seen at. And we started, you know, making some headway, you know, when we, in this particular area, when we got there and showed the flyer, people finally knew who we were talking about. You know, it was no more, I've never seen her before. You know, you could clearly hear people saying, are you talking about Layla? It's like, yeah, you know, so people in this particular, so we know she was definitely in this area and hung out in this area quite often because we started getting people saying, yes, yes, we know who she is. Yes, I've seen her, you know, and, you know, they also were the ones that um, came up and, you know, drove when they realized what we were doing, some of the people that were reluctant to speak to us when we were at their home actually got in their vehicles and came and found us to tell us what they knew. So they must have discussed it with their, their family, you know, whether or not to tell Jennifer or, you know, give her some information or whatnot. But there were, there were a few people that ended up getting in their vehicles and, and, and finding, finding us, you know, to, to tell us what they knew when they realized that we were in this community. So 
It was, um, it was a good, it, like I said, that last trip, you know, we didn't find her, but it was a very, very, very good trip. And um, I think it, if nothing more, it, 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 you know, this is, this has got to be excruciating for Jennifer, you know, to be dealing with all of this. And we all know that. We all know that. Um, but she is the kind of mother that wants to know anything and everything. She doesn't want anything left out. If there's a possibility, she wants to know immediately. Um, and you can't blame her. You know, you can't blame her because uh, she hasn't seen her daughter in over, over three months. And there's a lot of bad stuff going on in our world, guys. I tell you what, every single day I come in here and I look at very specific search criteria. You know, I have my, my keyword searches my search criteria and I read through I mean if I were to tell you that I probably read through 20 or 30 cases before I even select a single one you guys see that most of our morning we have like a almost like an entree right so we have the entree the entree usually is is like a Brian Koberger or the Alex Murdaugh of the discussion right um, but before that we have our appetizer and our cocktail or our um, salad you know our, our, our side pieces right and, and those are the other cases those are the other cases the ones that we don't really invest time into but we want to bring them to you so you know about them uh, such as this this New Jersey thing like we have never covered anything about this uh, you know this cop that could have potential that's you know on the hook for potentially injuring his infant child we never covered that. We didn't hear that, but people want to know that that, that you know, there you know they want information like this. They want to know what's going on in their backyard. So I have to be honest with you. For every single one of those little cases that we that I bring up at in, in the morning before we get to the entree or or the main course of, of the show, those I read probably thirty articles, thirty or forty articles before I select the one. So. Even when you're seeing what I'm presenting to you, understand that there's so much more. There's so much more. Um, and there's so much abuse out there with our children. And I, I, I think if we, if, if we were to really, like we cover quite a, quite a lot of cases and we cover a lot of crime here as many other true crime um, channels do but literally it is sickening how many stories literally on a daily basis and every time I do my search criteria this is what the crazy thing is is I can do that same search criteria not change my keywords at all do that same search criteria right all throughout the day all throughout the day and that thing is updated throughout the day so the stories that I was looking at yesterday or yesterday morning after we got off our coffee club there's like 15 or 20 cases that have been added since then it's really heartbreaking it's really heartbreaking I think one day you know we may depending it's not going to be right away but I'm going to show you kind of like a little bit of behind the scenes um, searches you know what I do kind of how I come across um, some of the cases how I review them um, you know what goes into them I, a lot of people don't realize that we actually have like paperwork that I have you know I have master sheets where it has different types of cases and it depends on what checklist I use um, for the cases so I can figure out what public record requests I need to have um, sent out on them and it keeps it, it, it helps me dialogue all that um, and it's on the computer so I do have paper copies and sometimes look which one was right on the top this is when I took the intake in for Layla Santanella this is Layla Santanella's uh, paperwork when I was um, just getting like literally I can tell you the day I found out about this case it was August 6th August 6th is when I, I received an email because I got the email attached, you know? And um, 
So that's why I, I would have never learned of this case if it wasn't for a, a friend of um, Jennifer Santanello sending me this paperwork. And she sent it to me because they were trying to get eyes on this case and nobody was biting. But, you know, I mean, granted, there was a lot of uh, drama and chaos brought to the case, not by us, by any stretch of the imagination, but we know by who. And um, it still got attention, you know? I mean, it, it, it was stuff that was unnecessary. I'd rather it not happen. We don't want that, that kind of attention when we're trying to help a family. Um, but we didn't do it, you know, we can't, we can't um, be, you know, it's not our bad behavior, it's theirs. So what do we do? You know, we just do what we can do. It, it did get some attention, you know, we were able to get, do you know that that video that I did that had, that, that uh, went viral, it's about to cross over 3 million views. And that, I'm telling you, is something, people are still looking at it, people are still seeing her face. Uh, on TikTok and other social media platforms. It really is um, beautiful how social media can take uh, somebody from a small little town and be able to broadcast their missing person all across the world in a matter of seconds. That's huge, guys. I don't think we, we quite appreciate um, the opportunities that social media bring, you know, for for people. It, it's not just here to help us. We can use this to help so many people, and that's what we try to do day in and day out. But it's hard to believe. I forgot I even filled this out uh, at the beginning uh, for Layla. I write down the, the I write down the police department's number, the location, the address. I get all kinds of, of information um, that I go, and then I make a list of a whole bunch of questions, and I start answering them. And if I can't answer them, then I start looking for those answers. And that's where this is where it kind of all starts is right here. So, anyways, where are we at? Thirty seven minutes. Betty, you've been doing a great job for Jen to get all. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I just wish, I wish we could get that. You know, I really do. Don't forget uh, the dollar, the dollar will do campaign we're doing. We're trying to raise, well, there's, it, it's two part because I, I, I guess I misunderstood the whole PI thing. I did not realize that she, the $1,800 was a retainer for the PI. I can tell you that that retainer, you know, PIs are not cheap. So that retainer is going to be eaten up quite very fairly quickly and there's still ongoing costs that are associated with her PI and then in addition to that we're still trying to increase the reward fund because you know I feel I, I think the family feels and I think we all can agree that the more money you have for a reward whole, you know hardcore cash um, I, I, I think it really does help people get off the fence, especially some of the people that she was hanging out with. They're in desperate need of money. And I truly believe if we can just get somebody to come forward because they want the reward and they they want to provide the information and the reward will help them move away from, you know, maybe the bad element or, or something that may be preventing them from coming forward or, or providing additional information in the matter. Um, but we just need people talking and I think that once that reward fund goes up and it's broadcasted and we can start po posting flyers all over Kingsport, it, we're hoping it sways somebody, you know, seriously sway somebody. And um, I still haven't bathed, <laughs> I still haven't bathed. Guys, I gotta tell you, like I got, I, I, I won't lie, I'm gonna be reviewing quite a few of these things. So if you guys are in the, um, I mean, I, I didn't even show you guys the other stuff they got. They, they, they got. They got the um, um, coconut haze in the um, the melts um, and butterscotch. So I'll let you guys know what how how these smell. Um, I also have so I've got uh, frosted pumpkin, butterscotch, and coconut haze for the melts. 
And then for all the, um, it's going to take me a while to review all these soaps because these soaps last a while, guys. I mean, I, I'll tell you because I, I have a bar that I had like a year ago. Um, it's still in the shower. I mean, it's just a little bit of, you know, little left on it. But uh, that's why I was going to sue Dolly. <laughs> you guys remember me poking butt at, at Dolly? Saying, I better watch what you do, fool whore. Betty's coming to sue you, right? I took a picture of Virginia, and I said, it's a crime to be without Dolly soap. I, 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 I guess I guess PJ said, you know what, Dolly had enough lawsuits. Uh, let's just go ahead and, and, and send Bullhorn Betty a, a crap load of, of soap so at least we don't have to worry about her shenanigans for a while, right? <laughs> so they've got, um, aww, Dumplin's Citrus. Aw, Dumplin, you got one named after you too. Aw, that's so cute. So Dumplin's Citrus. We've got uh, the Caribbean Turtle Haze. This, 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 uh, his, his shrink wrap isn't, isn't broke on here. I broke my shrink wrap on, on this one so I could smell it. Oh, I'm telling you, this, this here, it smells like the best freaking chocolate ever, okay? I, it, this is going to be hard to make faith with. You guys think I'm joking about, yeah, I know everybody's laughing when I say I want to eat this bar, but you don't understand why I'm saying that. Like, literally, you need to buy the bar and smell it. As soon as you smell this bar, you're going to say, I want to eat the flipping bar. Like, Dolly, we don't want to bathe in the bars anymore, okay? We just want you to make this stuff in candy form, okay? We're candy holics, okay? I don't care if my pits stink, okay? But I do care if I go without chocolate. I, I just want to let you know. Just joking. <laughs> I know my mods are like, oh, God, Betty, do you really have to say stuff like that that they can clip? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. That's the fun of it. We also have the uh, Captain Crunchberry that I will be checking out. Oh, even PJ. PJ has hers. PJ's is Black Raspberry Vanilla. Ooh. I bet you that smells really good. And... Aw, hunting, you got your own too. Aw. Moose. Moose. Is it moose coffee? Hunting's moose coffee. Ooh, so another coffee flavor. Ooh, ooh. Ah. Uh, I like ours better. Sorry, hunting. No offense. I'm sure you like yours better too, but I like ours so much better. Mmm. I want to eat this damn bar. Dolly, send me some chocolate. No. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> Everybody's like, no, let's wash your pits. <laughs> oh, boy, we have so much fun. And I'm glad I, I, I talked about the teddy bear. Did I tell you guys? With it, the teddy bear came, came chocolates, and I couldn't figure out where I did. I tore this house upside down uh, looking for these chocolates. I did, and I couldn't find them. I'm like, what did I do with them? You know, sometimes I'm just like a blank screen up, upstairs. Probably shouldn't have said that. That came out wrong. But anyways. <laughs> so anyways, I come in here, and I was showing you guys the new addition, which is this cute little teddy bear. And then I see my chocolates. I've been looking for them for like a freaking week. And they're so cute. Everybody keeps saying I need to get an animal, okay? Well, there you go. I got one. I don't know what to call it, teddy bear or puppy dog or whatever. Oh, mm. The chocolate and caramel. Oh. Mm. 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 Okay, let me get on the computer. All right, guys, I'm going into StreamYard, so I'll be backing out of this, the, the one I'm here in just a second. Let me get my, my microphone and everything. Oh. And then we'll go check. We'll go check. Actually, let me go check on the beef stew now. I mean, we got, we got a little bit of time. What time was it? It's only been about a half hour, hasn't it? I think it's only been about a half hour. I really, it doesn't really matter. I, I'm personally, when you're cooking, like, soups and stews and stuff like that, the longer the better. I'm sorry. I'm one of those people that I, I, I'll I, like if, if it wasn't for me feeding my um, neighbor. Oh, I can't switch. I'm not on StreamYard. Crap. 
I just realized I, I, I'm running straight through YouTube Live. I don't think it'll let me get in from this way. Hold on, let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do. Probably not a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> oh boy. You guys might be stuck on the phone. I don't know what to say. You guys might be stuck on the phone. Uh, focus your live stream YouTube insert tab. No, I don't want to hit a commercial. Um, okay, turn on. All right, I don't know what I just turned on, but it just told me to turn on something. I don't think it's going to let me, um, I really don't. I don't think it's going to let me um, get into this. Let me see. Able, no, it's not going to let me get into it. I am connected, but it's not letting me get into it from my computer. So you guys are stuck with me on the phone. Let me plug you guys in. So that means I can turn this stuff off. Ugh. All right. Well, I wasn't going to stay on here too long. I just wanted you guys to see what the beef stew. And then, um, you know, I might uh, do a different, I might go like later today because it's going to cook down for quite some time. So once like in another hour or so, I may just go ahead and um, I don't know, uh, probably do a live part two so you guys can see the progress because I'll show you how I thicken everything up. And then we still have to pop the biscuits. <laughs> fake biscuits in the oven but you know again I realize I complicate a lot when it comes cook to cooking so uh, I think with my audience nobody really wants to cook a biscuit from scratch they like the ones that come out of cans I personally do not so I'm looking at alternatives and so the alternative I found that I can live with is not canned biscuits okay I will be honest with you it's frozen biscuits like I can live with the frozen biscuits but I don't like the canned biscuits. There's something about the canned biscuits, the stabilizers, the preservatives in the bis the canned biscuits. I just truly don't like. What I like about the it looks like the uh, there's less chemicals in the frozen biscuits because they're made almost like scratch and then and then uh, flash flash frozen. So it's almost like you are getting a fresh biscuit. But again, even those have preservatives and stuff in them. So I I just prefer making it from scratch. But Again, all we're doing here is just making the beef stew. I'm not gonna worry about the biscuit. Uh, it's kind of hard. I think a lot has to do with is that the kitchen, you know, I don't really have it set up so I can record it. <laughs> so um, it makes it hard to have a lot of things that you need to cook from scratch because usually when I'm in there, I'm not worried about, you know, cameras. I'm not worried about how my hair looks. I'm not worried about cleaning up the mess right away, you know, because I'm just not. So I'm in there. I, I, I like literally looks like a bomb went off in my kitchen when I cook for, you know, cook a dinner because I've got flour everywhere. I've got, you know, God knows. I mean, literally, you never know what I'm going to cook. Some days I wake up, I don't even know what I'm going to cook. I do not. I'm not um, uh, uh, one of those planners. Um, but whatever I cook that, you know, like if I get a rotisserie chicken, I can guarantee if I get a rotisserie chicken from the store, I'm going to be uh, having a soup, a stew, or a, a hot pot pie when I'm done eating that chicken. <laughs> I mean, these are just things I know about, right? <laughs> so I plan like that. Like, I know that if I'm getting a rotisserie chicken, I, like, I just had chicken and noodle soup. So I, 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 with the rotisserie, I'm not going to make another chicken and noodle soup. It'll probably some, be something more in line with maybe chicken and dumplings or a chicken pot pie. I love chicken pot pie and something very simple you can do for rotisserie chicken and it's it's almost it, it's almost all the steps are almost identical to making the soup it's just you add um, either um, cornstarch or flour you know make a roux and a flour um, and, and thicken your sauce up that way for the pot pie but anyways that's just me okay uh, I'm not a, I, I, I want to make sure everybody out there before they start saying oh she's a chef Where's your degree and your certificate? Oh, honey, I'm from the South, okay? We, we, don't, we don't play, yep, beef stew and biscuits, baby. Beef stew and biscuits. But, we, you know, I'm from the South. We don't, we don't have, you know, certificates on the wall to cook, you know. We, you, either got the, you either got cooking skills or you just don't, okay? And, and those that don't have cooking skills in the South, they have no problem just moving on over and letting the people that know how to cook, cook. Like, right? And, and even in, in, in the South, 
There's not a, a, a secret sauce to it either. Like most people just grill their food. No matter who, what you grill your food, your food always tastes good because it's grilled food. I don't know what it is about grilling food, but no matter what you do, unless you just absolutely do not season your meat, you're going to have good food. I need a cooking apron. Oh, I got several of them. I got several of them. I actually got a, a, a solid black apron that I keep in the car because I always have... <laughs> I'm always checking my oil and stuff and I hate having to lean over my dirty car. So I actually have a black apron in the car that I, I put on when I'm doing car work. <laughs> I'm not lying. So those that are just tuning in, I'll take you guys for a, for a little walk. We'll take, take a little walk uh, to the kitchen and I'll show you what my beef stew looks like. My beef stew. Look at that. So now it's just stewing. Can you guys see that? Is it fogging up the... That's good. That's real good. Hold on. There we go. And you can see, I mean, it's going to be a chunky... Can, I, can you guys see that? There you go. So it's going to be a really chunky, um, robust... I mean, you know, it's... it's I, I make a good hearty... Uh, beef stew when I do it because I like hearty beef stew. I like having all the Big cuts of vegetables in there, but I don't I don't make my meat like the meat that's in there I don't cut I don't cut that like I do. I don't make that as thick as I do my um, Vegetables I like a chunky vegetable, but I like my meat very very tender. So I make my I don't want them overcooked and, and just falling apart, but I like them super tender so There you have it folks. We'll be back probably in about two hours and we'll start finishing that whole process up. But right now I'm just trying to cook all the, the, the like the vegetables together and just marry all that together. I don't know if I'm going to eat it tonight, personally speaking. Um, I will serve it up for my neighbor. But I don't know if I would eat it tonight because I'm one of those people that like it going into the refrigerator overnight before I eat it. It just is more flavorful. I don't know why, why it does that. I know some chef out there can explain it to me, but it's some kind of secret phenomenon Whenever you're cooking a soup and you stick it into a refrigerator for the night, these these flavor gremlins come in, and I don't know how they do it, but they lift they lift the lid of the pot and they just make it taste ten times better than it did the day before. I don't understand how it happens, but there are food gremlins out there that do this wonderful thing. I don't even know if I should call them grim gremlins. They're not gremlins. They're like angels. Like you know, it's like ah. You get the light coming up as they come down into the stock pot and they just go abracadabra and then boom next morning it tastes 10 times better can, can a chef explain that to me please oh yeah you guys can see that the original there it is dot the bounty hunter and uh brian laundry did you guys ever see these did i ever show you guys these i finally got them in frames i finally got them in frames there it is and bertolino so, and then of course I got my plaque from my uh, beautiful mods. This was a, a gift from one of our beautiful subs that says Just Breathe, Gabby Petito. And of course, what would Bullhorn Betty's office be without a picture of Don Wells in prison, right? A hand-drawn picture of Don Wells in prison, right? So what would, a, what would an office be without Don Wells? Don! I just want to let you know you're very special in my heart and I keep a picture of you because I, I want to manifest this, right? So I'm manifesting you taking responsibility for what you did to your daughter because that's right there. That's where I would like Don Wells and Candace to be right there sitting there in a jail cell because that's exactly where they should be. And I'm not even talking about Summer Wells. I'm talking about all the crap, the child crap that they should be charged with for endangering their children. All the stuff unrelated to Summer Wells. That's truly what I want. I want to see him. And I, I look at him every day I go in there and in that jail, that drawing. And hopefully one day we'll see him in there very soon. But all right, guys, I love you. God bless. And we'll see you soon. Take care.